Hey, my name is Kelly Hood, and today I want to talk a little bit about the NIST cybersecurity framework. Now, while it seems that half of the community is off on the West Coast at Hacker Summer Camp, NIST decided to release the cybersecurity framework 2.0 draft. And what's exciting about that is that it's the full document this time. Back in April, we got a preview with the discussion draft of the core, but now we've got the whole thing. So I wanted to take a few minutes to dive in, talk about the changes, as well as some of the subcategories and things that have changed since the discussion draft, and, uh, and provide an overview of what I've found so far. So I wanted to start off by talking a little bit about how Govern is going to be incorporated. We heard um, back in the discussion draft that the Govern function was coming, and now we can see here it is. So now on the image on the right, we can see that in 2.0, it's looking like Govern is going to be added as a wraparound on the well, on, as a in, in, on the inside of the other five functions, highlighting the importance of governance setting that foundation across all of the other five functions. And to get a little bit deeper into the weeds, we can see a side-by-side -side image here from CSF 1.1 to CSF 2.2, the draft of, of what the, the hierarchy is. We have the functions, the categories, and the subcategories, and we can see just by the left and right comparison that where we previously had five functions, we just talked about that govern function being added, bringing us to six. Um, the categories actually are decreasing from 23 to 22, um, which had been previously 21 in the discussion draft, and we'll talk about that a little bit. We've got a new category since April. And then the subcategories are decreasing as well now from 108 to 106. But as we'll talk about, there's a lot of realignment. Um, but as far as the numbers go, here's the, this is the breakdown I'm finding so far. Uh, one thing they did add, though, was a lot more guidance on the core. So previously, we had informative reference built into the table of the document in the core itself, but they're breaking that off now into another document, along with a ton of implementation examples. And so that you can actually find in the discussion draft of the implementation examples. So I'll have the link here as well as below in the in the uh, video notes. Um, so definitely take a look at that. There's a ton of guidance there and implementation examples that are, I think are going to really help companies figure out what, what do these outcomes, what do these subcategories mean to me, and, and what do you really want me to do? So now to get into the nitty gritty, we've got again the side by side here of the, the, uh, the categories for the cybersecurity framework. We can see on the left, the CSF 1.1, and on the right, we've got CSF 2.0, the draft that's out today. So I wanted to walk through here and do kind of a left and right, similar to how I did back in April, the discussion draft, and we'll talk about what's been added, what's been removed, and how it's all been reshuffled around. So first off, uh, obviously govern the new function here, and we can see at the top um, that govern is actually appears to be the largest function now with six uh, six categories. Um, and but a lot of those things used to be in the identify function and some of the other functions as well. So there's a lot of realignment, but pulling it out and really trying to highlight that and the importance of cybersecurity governance setting the foundation for a program and all of the capabilities that you'll put in place. Next, I wanted to highlight that there are 12 categories that were removed or are really realigned. So in yellow here on the left, I've highlighted all of the categories that you may have uh, be familiar with and recognize that will no longer be in the framework moving forward. But again, a lot of the concepts are still there, but it's just those that language, these specific terms like business environment, you won't see anymore. But what NIST has done is move it over and rename some and reshuffle, like I mentioned. So business environment, for example, is now becoming organizational context as it got moved up into the, the new govern function from previously being in identify. Additionally, the second one there, governance, you know, it's not being removed while the category is removed. It got its own function. So uh, we've got some realignment there. And then you can see on the screen down below some of the other arrows highlighting where these categories that are being removed are really being realigned and some of that concepts are being rolled in um, rolled in in the updated version. And to elaborate on that, we can see here on the right side now all of the new categories that were added. So there were 11 categories that have been added or, or renamed, like business environment being coming organizational context, for example. Um, but we can see here that the six categories in govern are all new. However, a lot of those concepts did get pulled in from other functions of the framework. We can also see a new category and identify around improvements, um, um, as well as some others across protect, detect, and or protect and respond. And where those are coming from are highlighted here with the arrows again. So we can see where, um, where much of those are coming from identify 
moving up to govern. Um, improvement, like I mentioned, is actually coming a lot from Respond and Recover. There were some improvement activities down there, and then it's also being broadened to cover improvement activities across your entire cybersecurity program, really. Um, a couple other call-outs I wanted to do and protect around platform security and technology infrastructure resilience. Um, platform security or platform itself is a term that we're seeing uh, showing up more in the framework here, highlighting um, really, I think, a more generic way of talking about our assets or our systems for an organization. So they've started using that term here and rolled in previous categories um, such as information protection processes and procedures and, and pulling some of those as well as protective technologies over into that new category. So that's where we got things that are moving over. Um, one of the other things I wanted to highlight that's different from the discussion draft that was released in April is the oversight category up in Govern. So that, that bottom one up in Govern is brand new. That is the only one that wasn't in the discussion draft um, at all, but it was added to highlight that governance oversight that a cybersecurity program should have. And the other nuance here, we'll see that cybersecurity supply chain risk management is now in the govern function, where that was previously in identify, we had a, a supply chain category. But now that one also, since the discussion draft, has been moved up into the govern function. Um, but again, I wanted to highlight that a lot of things did stay the same. There's a lot of um, nuances and tweaks to wording to provide clarity and where NIST had gotten feedback on um, wording being confusion or the community wanting additional guidance or better understanding of what the categories and subcategories were or were asking for. And so there are some nuances, but, but largely but there are still a lot of things that stayed the same. And that's what I wanted to highlight here. We've still got asset management is uh, in the, the new version. We've still got risk assessment. We've still got awareness and training and data security and a lot of those core things that we know need to be a part of a good cybersecurity program. So there's a lot that did stay the same as well. And then here I have a nice summary slide um, that provides the, the overview of everything that I've seen that's moved um, and been added from a category level. And we can see lots of arrows moving back and forth. But hopefully this helps provide just a little bit of context for what's changing and where it's changing or moving to. So I hope this has been a valuable overview. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm still digging into the subcategories and looking at all the nuances there. Um, I know how I'll be spending the rest of my week. But I wanted to highlight this for you all, and I hope this has been helpful. Um, also, here's a few links to the documents itself. If you haven't found the Cybersecurity Framework 2.0 draft yet, I've got the link here on the screen, and I'll put it down in the notes, along with the discussion draft of the implementation examples, which are really interesting to provide those specific um, ideas for how you might implement these uh, categories and subcategories for yourself. Also, um, in the announcement that NIST put out, they let everybody know that there is going to be a workshop number three in September. So it's going to be September 19th and 20th. It will be a hybrid event. It sounds like it'll be at the NCCOE for anybody that wants to attend in person. So keep your eyes open for that. And any comments that you have on the draft, um, they are still looking for feedback from the community. So if you have any, provide it to NIST by November 4th, 2023. So again, I hope this has been helpful. Please let me know if you have any other questions. Um, I'd love to have a conversation about the changes and uh, as we all keep digging through them. So thanks so much. Cyber Solutions strives to help organizations identify and address their blind spots through our assessment, implementation, and advising services. For more information about Optic Cyber Solutions and how we can help you integrate the CSF update or conduct a CSF gap assessment, reach out at info at or check out our website, OpticCyber.com.